kids. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to 6 to 9 service. Let's pray. Oh God, bless us this day as we are here and all around. Bless those who are in another place. Bless us as well. Give those who don't have transportation enough money to get transportation. Give those people who don't have energy to have energy to go to church. And please bless those people who are still in school and those who have closed school. Please bless us as we are at home or at school. And we don't want more people to die because we love our loved ones. And in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Let's welcome the prison worship team. Oh God, we thank you for everything that you have given us, oh dear God. We thank you for the for the for everything that you have given us, oh dear God. We help those people that are in need, oh dear God. We thank you for everything. We are so grateful, oh dear God. The in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. A very good morning to you, boys and girls. How are you this week? How are you doing? It's so nice of you to join us today for our lesson. I'd like to welcome all of you who are watching and those who are listening in to our lesson today. We also thank God for hearing our prayer and we want to appreciate the boys and the girls in the worship team. Thank you so much for leading us so well and may God bless you. My name is Teacher Carol Monene and I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be with you today. Now, let us start by reminding ourselves what we learned last week. We learned that God gives us courage. Yes, he gives us courage and helps us to be brave so that we can do that which he wants us to do. Now, teacher Rehema 
asked us to write all the things that make us afraid and where we need God's help, where we need God to give us courage so that we can be able to do them. Did you write down your list? Good. And have you been praying and asking God for courage? I know you have. We here have also been praying with you and we shall continue to pray with you. Okay? Good. Now, as we start our lesson today, I want you to get your notebook, your Bible, and your pen. As always, be ready with those and we will start together. Right. Now, I have something here with me. I have some items, some things. Can you see what I have? Can you see what this is? Yes, it's a toothbrush. And what's the purpose or the use of a toothbrush? Mm -hmm. To brush our teeth. Okay, I also have something else. This is a, a shoe brush, yes. And we use a shoe brush to polish our shoes and make sure they are shiny and clean. Now, boys and girls, both of these are brushes, yes. But they were both designed and made for a special and unique purpose or use. The toothbrush is best for brushing your teeth and the shoe brush, of course, is best for polishing your shoes. Now, would you use this to brush your teeth? You would. Would mom allow you? Would it even fit in your mouth? I wonder. That would be quite a sight. Okay? Now, in our lesson, we're going to learn that God gives us purpose. God gives us purpose. And purpose is the reason or the plan that God had when he created us. Now, God created each and every one of us very unique. And there is no one else in the world who is created exactly like you. There is no one else. Look around. You will find that we look different. We can do different things. We have different abilities. We even live in different places, different countries, different estates. But although all of us were made by God and we are different, we are special and valuable to God because he made us and he, he made us just the way he wanted us to be and he loves us. God also placed us in this world and gave us a special purpose. He had a special plan for each and every one of us. God wants us to know him. He wants us to live a life that pleases him and also to bring others to him so that they can know him. Now, boys and girls, our Bible story in our lesson today is about a beautiful queen who was named Esther. And this story is from the book of Esther from chapter 4 all the way to chapter 9. So turn with me and let's listen and hear and learn what God's purpose for Esther was. Now, Esther lived in Persia, a country called Persia. She lived with her cousin Mordecai. Mordecai and Esther were both Jews. They were Israelites. And Esther loved God. Now, the king of Persia wanted a and so he sent out word and had all the beautiful young women brought to him so that he could choose a queen. Esther was amongst those women. She was also brought before the king. And when the king saw her, he liked her best of all. And he chose her to be his queen. Now, God had a special plan and purpose for Esther. Esther's life. Now we read that in the palace there was a king's helper, a man. His name was Haman. 
hated Mordecai and all the Jews. He hated them so much that he convinced the king to write a law and have all the Jews killed. Can you imagine what an evil plot? Now, Mordecai learned um, what Haman was planning to do. He heard of this terrible news. So upset, he was so sad. He cried and he put on sackcloth and he was mourning because the people of God, the Jews, were going to be destroyed. So Mordecai quickly sent a message to Queen Esther in the palace and he asked her to do something to stop this wicked plan. Now when Esther heard the news, she was afraid. She was afraid because she knew she could not go to the king. She could not go before the king without being invited. There was a law that anyone who went to be before the king without being called or being invited would be killed on the spot. Now Esther did not want to die. She was so afraid. And Mordecai had to talk to her. We read in verse 13, Mordecai sent this message to Esther. He said, don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all the other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief will come for the Jews from some other place, but you and your father's family will die. Mordecai was reminding Esther and encouraging her that God may have allowed her to become the queen so that he could use her for his purposes. Now, Esther got the message. What did Esther do? Boys and girls, let us watch the clip and see what happened.
boys and girls, did you see? What did Esther do? Did she do anything to help her people? Yes. Esther asked them to pray and fast for her for three whole days. And she trusted God to show her what to do. And she obeyed, even though she was very afraid. We also saw that God gave her courage to go before the king and to tell him of the wicked plan uh, by Haman. Haman was punished and God used Esther to save his people from being destroyed. Boys and girls, God has a special purpose and a plan for your life too, just like he had for Esther. And that is why God put you in this earth. That is why God put you in this family, the family that you're in. That's why God put you in that school where you go to, even in the estate where you live, because he has a special purpose for you right there. Remember, you are very special and valuable to God. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse um, 10 that God has planned good works for all his children to do. And he has given his children gifts and talents and he prepares his children so that they are able to do these good works. Now, God might be preparing you to be a missionary, to be a doctor, or even a great woman or man of prayer. Even at your age, as uh, where you are right now, God will use you to show others that he exists and that he wants them to know him and to come to him. But he will do so if you choose to follow and obey God, he will do so. Now, boys and girls, the greatest of God's purpose for our lives is that we know and we receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And that we have all our sins forgiven. And that way, we will be able to be with God forever. Now, if you would like us to pray together, so that you can receive Jesus as your savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I confess that I have sinned. I believe that you died for me on the cross to take away all my sins. Please forgive me and make me your child. I put my trust in you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, if you have prayed that prayer, you are a child of God and you have Jesus in your heart and you have the Holy Spirit in you. And as a child of God, the Holy Spirit will help you to live your purpose, to live out the purpose that God has for you in, in this life and also to bring and draw others to him. As a child of God, you need to also read the word of God, the Bible, every single day so that you may know what God wants you to do. You may know God's will. And when you know God's will and with his help, you obey what God tells you to do. Now, whenever you don't know what to do, you can always pray. Pray and ask God to help you to know what to do and to live according to his will, just like Esther did. And in fact, we are going to do so right now so that God can help us live out our purpose. So let us pray together, boys and girls. Uh, dear God, I thank you that you have a special purpose and plan for every boy and girl who is listening in today. I thank you that you have given them gifts and talents so that they are able to accomplish your plan and purpose um, for their lives. I thank you, Father, that your purpose includes the gift of salvation and the forgiveness of sins.
I pray and ask you, Lord, to help them to live according to your plan. Help them to trust in you, O Lord. Guide them because you love them and you know them the best. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, boys and girls, it's time for us to learn our memory verse. Right. Our memory verse is from the Bible. It's from the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. And this is what uh, the Bible says. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Boys and girls, that means that God is working in you and me. He works in us and he helps us to want to do what pleases him. And he gives us the power to do it. So let us say the memory verse again. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Very good. Very good boys and girls. Now we'll, I have a craft for you to do. And this will remind you that God created you unique and with a special purpose for your life. So boys and girls, this is what you will need for your craft. You need some paper, manila paper. You need some ribbon or string, okay? A pair of scissors and some colored pencils or crayons crayons okay now on the paper I want you to cut um, to cut out a shape that you like it could be a rectangle a circle a heart shape just as unique as you are cut out the shape that you like and what we are making is a name tag a name tag so once you've cut like this is what I had for mine Make a hole, small hole at the top, and put your ribbon or your string. And then you're going to write the memory verse. And this memory verse, you will write your name. You're going to personalize it and use your name. So this is how it will read. For it is God who works in Caro to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose okay so you will use your name because you are made unique and special and God has a purpose for you and he has a purpose for me and once you've written the memory verse write also so I will read God's word I will obey God's word and I will trust in God always okay you got that? Good. Then decorate your name tag. And when you're done, when you're done, take a picture and send it to your children's pastor or your Sunday school teacher, and they'll send it to us. And we'll be so happy to see it. Okay? Great. Good job, boys and girls. Now we've come to the end of our lesson. And I want to thank you for being attentive. And I wish you a wonderful week. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.